smartest man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. And so the Bears are sending their compensatory fourth round pick to Jacksonville for Nick Foles. I know we need to run the ball more. I'm not an idiot. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Chicago Bears sweat. Go connect. Guess who's back? Phil Atosian, Shane Marshaw, the Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. You know what, it was an overthrow by Mitch. I mean, injured bear on the field is Akeem Hicks. Cousins loses the football, strip sack, and... Take away. Bears our life. Bears our life. We go all live right after Bears games with your boys draft talk and the smartest men alive. Yo. Bears our life. Bears our life. We go all live right after Bears games with your boys draft talk and the smartest men alive. Bring it up with the true analysis. You expect raw passion for the show. Bears fans cannot let locked in with real emotion and passion for every. Play. Go to bring that range, but then with facts by shame. Post game show like nothing else you're gonna hear. Some can try to copy, but a bucket's not sincere. Delivering the truth of what just happened to be clear. That's why we're on TV so you can see and not just hear. Hey, yo, it's Draft Dr. Phil, you know it's always hit sticks. Splitting double teams like 96 Akeem hits. You can tell the shit matters. A bit love can be felt. Critical of Nagy because the talent he's been dealt. Our life keeps growing. Shane's all knowing. Delivering the truth on how the Q. Beats throwing dimes on time, it's just lacking fundamental. Whatever the case, we get hot like Cecil. Fiery discussion about what happened in the game. This ain't your daddy's post game, don't expect a fucking flame. Not for the average man, I lost, they can't survive. But don't you worry, Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. We go all night right after Bears games with their boys trapped the talk and the smartest the men alive. The red flag. Bears Hour Live. Dr. Phil. Bears Hour Live. We go all night right after Bears games with their boys trapped talk and the smartest men alive. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. The Tape Never Lies Network. This is Bears Hour Live. We can't polish a turd, Bears fans. We cannot. I don't know what was going on with that open, if uh, Phil was using Matt Nagy's playbook or Claude, whoever it was, but that was pretty (laughs) awful. (sighs) Same old Bears, 19-13. They they lose to the hapless Minnesota Vikings. Uh, (laughs) Just uninspiring all over the place i know phil's gonna come in and talk about it here but third and five and you got guys <laughs> your offensive coordinator's calling for everybody to go deep simple slants just again fundamental football would mean a whole bunch but it hey i don't know the, the, this this is a tough one for me because we we invest so much time we invest money everything into this franchise and it seems like this franchise doesn't care honestly it's what it feels like that showing today that showing tonight nobody watching this show deserves that i don't know what you get excited about moving forward with this team the defense has some players but it's uh to me, it's a, a sad day to be a Bears fan. It really is because th- this team is a rudderless ship, and I, I don't see how they get out of it. You know, we 
we like to say that uh, we speak the truth here, and this is exactly what this is. When they were saying that the Bears were a fraudulent 5-1, and one, all the experts that were saying that, that we were holding accountable on this show, they were right. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. But here we go. So BHL, we're going to keep rolling no matter how bad the product is that we watch on TV. And we're going to get this going. And here comes Draft Dr. Phil to give us his rant. Turn it up a little, Claudio, because I can't. But there we go. I always give my rant in the reality of the truth. The reality of the truth here is no matter who calls plays, plays aren't football. Fundamentals are football. You got to understand your personnel. You got to understand the situations in the game to have a direct approach to attack a defense is to find its weakness. The Minnesota Vikings found your weakness. But you couldn't find theirs. And it really boils down to protection issues, run game philosophy, and blocking and tackling. Who wants it more? Your defense kept you in the football game. And your offense continues to fail and falter because you have nowhere to lean back. You have no one to rely on. There's no identity. There's no counterplay to another play. You're running the wildcat to try to get offense. And exactly what Shane is talking about. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. If you can't protect, you go to three-step game. And you allow your receivers, who might be your best offensive weapons, and your tight end, to beat a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's what you do. You force them out of zone. Find the matchup. That's your job as a head coach, as an offensive coordinator. Instead, you got no rhythm. You got no identity. You have no philosophy. You have a house without walls. It's all windows. You keep throwing rocks. Because at the end of the day, you can't fucking win like that. You can't. It's embarrassing. It's beyond embarrassing. You need everything to be right. And the ship is always going to sink. Every time. Every time. Because I look at a coach and a team that has no identity. Their identity is on the other side of the football. Their identity is other phases in their team. The GM is nowhere to be found. The head coach is lost. He's, he's all over there hoping that this shit happens. The quarterback is terrible tonight. Everything about this game reeks of mistakes, fundamental issues, no identity, and no philosophy. Because if you're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and try to be a playoff team, try to be a winning team, you got to run the football. You got to run. You can't have a receiver running the football. Now, granted, he was running hard. He was running hard, Corderell. But that's not how you win games. You don't go bubble screen at midfield on third down and set yourself up for fourth down where Anthony Miller drops the ball. It's getting overly redundant. Nobody is stepping up. Allen Robinson out there not throwing blocks. People walking around. You're off and Leno fucking pushing the guy again. The guy's getting fucking hammered. He's probably fucking got a lower lumbar issue now in the spine. 
the quarterback. Because just like Shane and I, Shane said, Nick Foles has never lasted a season. And all you Mitch haters, I'll tell you what, I was knowing that Mitch would be out there balling tonight. That's what I felt in my heart of heart. I said, I'll wait for the show to say it. I just feel it. This coach doesn't know how to use Mitch. He doesn't know how to use anybody. He didn't know how to use Jordan Howard. He doesn't know how to use the running Lamar Miller tonight. He's got one carry. He's the most instinctive runner. You're giving Arterius Pierce. He's running out of bounds. It's so disgusting on every level, Shane, that I can't even begin to think that this team has any kind of light at the end of the tunnel for offense. It's just, let's pray that we get a turnover in a short field so we can get some points because we're that bad offensively. It's hard to watch. It's an embarrassment. No matter who's calling the plays, this team is fumbling. Fumbling down their leg. Five and five. Mediocrity, mediocrity defined. And that is my rant, Shane. It's unbelievable. It's so heartbreaking on every level. Oh, it is, man, because it we've talked about it. It starts all the way up at the top, and I don't know how you can take any of this serious moving forward because if you're if you're gonna stay the same with the the way that this franchise is set up, how do you expect anything to change? I mean, it's there's got to be wholesale changes. I mean, we, at this point, Phil, I honestly believe that um, we've o- probably overrated some of the talent on this offense of guys that we're expecting to. I mean, Anthony Miller continues to go out there. You, you're, he found his position, Shane. He's a yeah, punt returner. Punt returner. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I'm saying, that's Phil. And it's, that's all he is. And you, you, you can't trade up into the second round for a guy like that. You know, that's, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's tough. Just, but Phil, little things. And I know this isn't, I'm, I do put this on to the head coach. I talked to your dad about this a couple of weeks ago. When you see, you see Nichols out there at the end of the game, they just give up a big touchdown. He, he makes a play and he's talking a bunch of shit in the back, in the backfield because he tackled the running back. Who gives a shit? Brett Urban was another one going and doing his little dumb fucking dance. When you're getting beat on Monday Night Football and your team is completely inept. You're a good defense. You're supposed to make those plays. What are you they doing? Kept, they kept them in the game. Yeah. I know you're I know what you're saying, but it's like these players need something to get pumped about. It's like they're trying because they don't have a fucking leader. They don't have an offense, Shane. So he, yeah. I get it. It's like a game within the game. I'm getting pumped up because I'm competing against the best running back right now in the league, and we're fucking stuffing them, and we're stopping them. And then, and then you can't do anything offensively. It's like I don't even have an analogy to make up. I've never been stumped. I've never left the game before in my life till tonight on that fucking screen pass on third down. Before the miss on fourth down, that's Claudio. Fuck third, slam third the door. and five, and you're going. I didn't even see the play. I didn't see fourth down. I fucking left. I'm fucking screaming to the gods. He could have dumped. He could have dumped that off to Mooney, Phil, and Mooney still be running right now on that fourth down play. I gotta see but, it. I've watched yeah. it like twelve times because I asked Shane to send it to me, and I couldn't. But I mean, third and five, Phil. That's where it starts. Third and third five. and five, it's, and you're throwing second the, you, down play call. You're throwing Think the ball about. negative five. To, to a wide receiver, that that's not his game not his at game. all. Exactly. He ain't fucking twitchy. He's fucking route high point receiver. He's not a yeah. twitchy. Let's get him a fucking screen ball. Every I'm watching football on Sunday, and I'm watching offensive linemen come off the ball. They're making holes. They're setting edges. And I'm, I'm like, what is this? I've never, right. I haven't seen an edge or a hole like this ever. With Matt Nagy. In fact, I could last time I think was Jordan Howard against the fucking Packers. They opened up a fucking hole and he fucking runs over 
fucking now the middle linebacker with the Giants. I forget the kid's name. A former Stanford middle linebacker. I'm sure someone in the chat remember. He fucking trucks him and goes into the end zone. You win the NFC North because you're running the fucking football. You have a pride. You have a fucking identity. Can you imagine me in this fucking locker room? Imagine my father. I can't, I can't even believe that you have no fucking pride. None. None. To run the ball is to define who you are. To go back there and waste downs with the Wildcat. You want to run the Wildcat? Put fucking a big guy in there that's going to fucking break a tackle. You're putting a receiver. He doesn't even know how to fucking mesh fake. It's so bad to watch it. Every action game is lazy. There's no fundamentals. And finally, you're seeing a pocket. You're seeing them in the beginning of the game. May give them some time, and they're doing it. But there is, as soon as the play call becomes so fucking gimmicky, you see the whole team go like this. That Jay Cutler twitch. They're they're uncomfortable because you don't know how to get them in a rhythm of confidence. I just can't. I, I just can't believe that you can't understand exactly, Stingray. You're still you're in my brain right now. I'm so fired up. That instinctive backs are the ones that need to run that outside and inside zone because they know how to fucking stretch it and cut it up in there and hit it. Not a fucking undrafted rookie who's never fucking got a carry. Oh my god, you give Lamar Miller, you understand your personnel and the matchups. You didn't run one fucking seam route to two tight ends that are 6'7! Six, 6'7! Seven. Six, seven. Meanwhile, you got Kirk Cousins doing a fucking happy electric dance, the boogaloo. Because he fucking finally won. And he ran waggle and dumped it to the tight end who ran, who's uncovered. This is what you're dealing with here. You're getting beat by fucking little league teams. You're a JV coach football team. It starts with pace, like Shane said. Get rid of fucking Nagy. Get rid of them all. Pagano, the head coach, tomorrow. Decide who you want to fucking call plays. Get this fucking BU philosophy the fuck out of Chicago. Because you never win by being selfish. You do it together. Until you are fucking together on offense, you will never win. So you can hold the punt returner accountable, but you can't hold the left tackle accountable. You got issues. All politics. All of it. All of it. I'm disgusted. I'm more fired up now than I was with the rant because I'm so exhausted with this fucking franchise. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. Phil, we had 149 total yards on offense tonight, oh. and we had a 105-yard kickoff return. Let that sink in. And you still had a chance to win the football game. You always have a chance to win with this defense. That's the thing. If you had a semblance of an idea, fuck all the dra fuck all the fucking talent. Get in two tight ends and start firing the fuck out. Run fucking 20 times. Get your offense going. Get the engine started by running. This you can't go second down runs. You go back and look. First down throw, second down run. That was Bill Lazor's, let's change this. First down throw, second down run. First down throw, and that's what he did. And that's, that's fucking, that's easy. That's it's easy. Cheap. And guess what they did? They got him in third downs, and they blitzed them every fucking third down. It was, you should be up there. This is where it is. No huddle on third down. No, give Nick the calls. Let him call out. Now we're slide protection to the right. We see it. 22's coming. 54's coming. Let's max protect. Run slants. Boom. First down. But we can't do that. We can't. Because we got a fucking a coach who's more worried about the fucking wildcat that they needed to put in this week because they were going to trick someone than actually fundamentals and knowing that you can't do anything offensively if you don't run the ball. Oh, it's so frustrating on every level. I had a terrible day. Terrible day, and this just fucking puts it over the top.
puts it over the top, Shane. It's tough, man. I'm right there with you. Like I said, we're we're invested into this team so heavily. I mean, we live and and breathe and die with this each and every day. Well, here's the Claude, you can pop it up. Here's the head coach. This should be a good one to listen to. Hold on. Um, you know, it's it's uh it's been the same stuff over and over. Where is it, Claude? Jeff Dickerson. There we go, Claude. Hey, man, I'm sure with everything going on offensively, the last thing you wanted to see was Nick get hurt like that at the end of the game. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. You know, first of all, is, is he doing okay? Get on your you Jeff. Share with us and kind of what's going through your mind as that's all happening. Yeah, no, it's – it's uh, you know, you, you take a step back and you, you just uh, – like you just said, you, you get a guy that's uh, – you know, we're all going through a lot right now, and then at, at the end you get injured like that. Uh, they're still looking at him. You know, it was his leg or his hip. So I think they're still working through the details on that. I have not talked to him yet uh, in the in the locker room. I will hear oh, it didn't after see we're it. done and just make sure he's okay. I know he's uh, I didn't see he's it. upset. I got to review um, the tape. You know, it's just been, it's been frustrating. It's been hard. And that's the part that's difficult through all this because uh, no one wants it more than, than it's him funny to, that to be out there. Khalil Mack teammates. throws so keep an eye on that. Drew Brees down. Again, it's uh, – Brady is gets a flag for that. Time Same for thing. Uh, we're, we're a little bit beat up right now, so we need to be able to get some guys back and get healthy. Yeah, that's what Pat Finley. Coach. Hey, Matt, what, what can you do to make sure that this buy doesn't send your guys into a funk? Um, you haven't won a game in a month. Yeah. I, I know you're positive, but how, how do you stay positive? Yeah, no, just by, by just persistence over resistance. You know, we, we had we had uh, uh, some guys break it down uh, in the locker room at the end of the game there, and uh, I was impressed with what they had to say. And, Again, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but it just got, it goes to show the character of that we're fighters. And as hard as it is and as frustrating, and we, like you said, you haven't won in a month, um, you know, we, we got to just gonna, They're not going to win at all. Over resistance no. and just keep fighting and keep staying together. Win. And eventually something here, you know, will hopefully change. And I think you know that's what where, changes? where we got to believe and trust and, and uh, keep playing for each other. What changes Dan you? You change. Matt, to finally get some takeaways and then also a couple punt returns that gave you plus field position. What is your level of frustration and not being able to turn that into anything? Yeah, it's high. It's high, Dan. You know, because oh as you all know, uh, this whole season, we've been no passion. We've been doing really well in defense. Um, we've been struggling a little bit with the field position. We're, we're letting teams kick field goals, not giving up touchdowns, and that's great. And that's what feels good. Oh, you're going to blame um, the defense. We weren't getting so many turnovers okay. and takeaways. We really put a huge emphasis on that all week long. And oh, and to God. get those early on in the game and get the field position on those. And, and then defensively, you know, we've been challenging CP and these guys have been taking it to heart to get a, a – a touchdown on a kickoff return and, he, and we got one and so that's the part where you know that's frustrating is we do all that we have field position and we still can't capitalize that's totally the part agree, that, Zach. Um, these the, questions the, the why man. part you know get to the root where's that your hurt. offense coach you came here to turn it around hey Matt, do you know right now if mitch will be available to you after the bye week and then uh second question just what what was your evaluation of the offense from your position on the sideline this week, not calling the plays. Yeah. So I don't know yet about Mitch. I, I, I think there's, I hate to say, I think there's a possibility, but I don't know that for sure. I think it's going to be day by day. I, I don't know if he knows that. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Obviously with, with, uh, with Nick's status, um, we'll have to see where that's at as we go, but um, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. And we'll, again, like I said, with the bye this week guy, at the right time, this is, I this just is don't know. We need it to come. And in my perspective, uh, from watching from the from the uh, from the sideline, is I thought we had a couple good drives in the first uh, half that we didn't capitalize in the touchdowns. Which I got to go back and see the, watch the tape. I know on the one third down they brought cover the zero, and um, you know we missed the the one route. Um, but what I what I felt today on the sideline, I felt that we struggled on second down. I felt that second down was not. Yeah, because you were predictable every time. Five yards in the run game. You which ran has been a lot better than what we've been doing. Every second and down it put us in at times second and four, and second and four was turning into sec third and five. Guess what, coach? Six, you can't run four, the wildcat on second and four. 
And and so that to me is what it felt Dumb like. Dumbass. You can't even block yeah. fucking inside zone. And you're going to go out no. and run wildcat with a receiver without a mesh? Are you gonna feel what are you doing? On the field and the way you weren't calling the plays. Can fucking you arena league. About the emotions that you felt and then how that changed as the offense continued to Takes struggle. Takes me two seconds to really figure you out. About it. Blitz yeah, so, the shit um, out of you on third down. It so That's it. You I'm can't protect. Just understanding that um, you're too. You know, I'm not calling the plays, and I, you know, what it does enable you to do is see some different things that you don't see when you know from in between plays, or or maybe it's right after a drive, a team's coming off the field, and you're looking for somebody to talk to or congratulate. That you're able to do that now, where I wasn't before. It, it was different, um, and. It took a little bit for me to get used to, but then I kind of felt comfortable in that role and, and, and was feeling it. Then you get down kind of into that fourth quarter when, you know, it's it's 19 to 13. And, you know, this we're guy will never have another drive. job in that, the that NFL just comes down to, to that trust. Right. In, in this guarantee in this you that <clears> be a fucking receivers coach, possible. passing um, game like coordinator of the wanna, fucking I did Kansas City Chiefs. Like, make Bill feel like I was on his shoulder the whole game. And I didn't do that. I, I just went and played. And so it was different for me, certainly. Two first Our downs time. in the second half. Think about that, coach. What are your thoughts on that? You don't need to see tape to know that's pathetic. Say it! Say it! Own it! We got to be better. Like, do something. To play callers. Did, did did Bill calling plays? Did that in effect kind of throw you off your game a little bit, or did it just seem like it was a detriment? Jesus. What did you? What impact What's do you think that had? Making throw him off his game. This is the same game. No, I don't think so. I think, you know, this has been something that for us has been going on, um, you know, most of this season, and uh, you know, we're just trying to get to a point to to let the, the reason the reason why why we did it right, why why we ended up doing this last week, like you said, offensive guru was was just because we felt Offensive. like we were, you know, struggling to get into that rhythm and we weren't taking advantage and, and we weren't scoring touchdowns. And we just, you know, we, we were, but we were scoring them. Phil, can you hear me? And we weren't getting touchdowns. Oh, yeah, coach. So I we can hear you. Know, Hold on. You can was, say whatever you want. No, today. no, I, it, it was still happening. I didn't so, know whether you could hear um, me because I yelled at a couple times. The players I wasn't on, I guess. Right now. The mic. But for us as a coaching staff, um, we need to make sure that we're we're really honestly going back now and, and saying, OK, you know what? What's going on and where are we at now that we have some time? We can't the, figure the it out. And then High the ranking that's important too. NFL guys, persons just texted when you get me. Into these bye weeks, Bill, it's very, very important they had to talk to negative two about, yards of offense. Really find out, OK, we have this, this going this into the fourth the quarter, season. Shay. And we want to six yards and get input from your players. Negative what's their suggestion? Two what's their thoughts? And then yards of offense. Figure out what's best for your, for your team. That's what I am going to do as a head coach. That as is a guy on offense. I'm Jonathan to Quinn to level to them crazy. A couple more for coach. Jason Leisure. You can't even freaking say this sucks. No, I'm Matt, so two quick. questions for you on Foles. So worried about uh, the locker room. Let's give him credit. He's, he's got a great locker room, team. Shane. Did you get a sense right away this was a very he's got real good team. players. They love him. He was, seemed like yeah, that's what it's about. Hit all night How many people love Lombardi and Halas? They fucking hated him. Yeah, so, you know, when I got out there right away, I wasn't sure what it was. I didn't know if it was like his ribs or his shoulder or what. And then when I saw the oh amount of pain God. that he was in, uh, talk on the about ground, Nick I, Foles' I, you know, injury. I hope he's okay, but you know he was. Well, in that's a lot the of question pain. they asked him. He's, he's a tough. He's a tough. Exactly. Dude. Why? And he was in a lot of pain. And we already we that, already heard about this before. With him, he doesn't um, know. It could be his hip. It could be his back. Uh, you he know, doesn't know. know. We're gonna ask him again. So Do your job, media. Negative two Again, yards of offense going the, into the fourth. The, you had six yards of offense. That's the story. Getting the ball out, quick game. Getting the ball out. And quick protection. game. You ain't got a quick game. The only thing quick is the fucking hook to get you out of fucking town. God, I can't stand this guy. Where, where, where are we at right now and, and how are we doing this and, and uh, you know, all that. I can't admit it was wrong. Thanks, coach. This is the guy that blamed it all on Mitch, Coach. He blamed it all on Mitch. And really tonight, you could see 
I just we didn't get to properly introduce you tonight, Coach. My dad, Coach Philatoshin Senior. You got this witness history tonight. Bears played the worst offensive game, and we're still in the game to show you how good this team could possibly be. Is in that place there? So they, this coach. Well, talk about what you saw. I don't want to structure your thoughts for you. No, I just saw a great defensive team losing a football game and have a, a kickoff return for 105 yards. Oh that was God. the impetus to get something going. And it's just, uh, there's no, you're right, Phil. I mean, I couldn't have said it any better what you said. And I'm not going to repeat what you said. But you're right, there's no rhyme or reason. First of all, I was thinking about these formations that he puts his team in. There's oh no God. way. And then I looked at the quarterback, and I look at most of the quarterbacks in the NFL that are real good quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Brady and Breeze, and they're yelling, linebacker, linebacker, Mike linebacker. Exactly. And they're telling the guys where to block and what's going on. They're not saying anything. There's no communications. And the formations are the same with no motion to determine whether you're going to have them. They don't give them any. They don't trade. Talk about trading. How how helpful would that be? Let me finish my my thought. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can't, you can't, you don't know whether they're in zone or or man to man. So if you get in close and they're all lined up in a bunch, you don't know who's coming. So now you have a problem with your offensive line. You even made it 10 times worse because they don't know where they're coming from. You've got to spread them out. Spread them out. Greasy pointed that out live on the air. You spread them out, and now your linebackers can't do what they're doing is blitzing. Because if they blitz, that guy's going to run a slant, and you got a, you got a home run. Slant. That's what you he's got to be reading. what that is in this offense. I'm it's telling you. unbelievable, It's so that. depressing to watch this thing. You know, and it's you've got two great receivers and a tight end that's not utilized. And it's just – it's embarrassing. Just look at this. This is the NFL. This is a Lafayette High School. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, oh my god. Yeah, you know, Phil, you want to run, but you can't win and run. You really can't win and run. Just take a look at the, the the New England Patriots. You can't. They won a game. On, I don't know how they won that game, but. You can't win the NFL with just running the ball. You you need to run the ball so you can do the other things. Well, but that's you what can't I mean. You rely on it totally. He's, he's got no identity, so they have to yeah, figure I, out I understand how you to got a great get running. these guys tough, and they yeah. don't do it. They can't do it. And well, you got point, who's in charge of the personnel? Who drafted these guys? Ryan because Pace. Number seventy-two <clears throat> is not an NFL player. He's no. not an NFL. You can scratch him off. That guy, he's got to go. Your right tackle is not any better. I'm telling uh, you. As a matter of fact, your best player is your center, and the rest yeah. of the guys you can take. Take your <clears> backup <throat> guys and start them next week. They'll be incentive. That would be an incentive because well, you've got young people that drafted are probably real good players that don't know their assignments. So make it simple. Keep it simple. Stupid, right? Exactly. And, We've been saying this just for months. Go, go in there Years. And, and do some things that they can do. That's right. You, you gotta know. know your personnel and you gotta attack the defenses and their weaknesses, but you can't find them out. And I tell you uh, something, I didn't I don't think they had it. You know, before this game started, somebody said the Bears are gonna kill this team. And I said, No, the Bears are gonna lose tonight. That's my thought. That's what's in my mind. I didn't think that I know that I picked them to lose. Yeah, I I picked them to lose too. But you know why? They because their defense is a real good defense, and and your offense is a poor offense, so they got the advantage right there. Right, they have an average offense with a great back, and we have a great defense, and then they have a good defense. So that's going to trump you. How about this? Yeah. How about this stupidity of a coach? The broadcast is scouting for them. Special teams, they've been shitty. They let up a kickoff. They had a missed snap on a fucking field goal, extra point. And here's the game and the balance. You're not out there trying to block that last punt. As a as a as a leader of men, 
as a NFL coach that has 15 guys cutting tape, helping scout, giving you those stats, not the PFF ones, the real ones, and you're not going all out to block their punt when this guy's Phil, had we talked three about that last we, week. We talked about that in real time. It, and the, the Vikings are a team that has struggled snapping the football. Exactly. You should be scouted that, Should've. know it, and go after it. That should be your plan. Instead, we're, we're, I think I put we're not that even going to return it. We're not even going to return it. it how can disgusting. you not block that punt when they were punting the last time? I just don't understand how they didn't go after him. Oh, my God. It, it's a disgrace. Uh, and, There's so many disgraces. Yeah. Like, well, Nick Foles wasn't on his game. Well, you know something? You, I gotta just I gotta relate this to you. Go ahead. Rick, Nick Foles is a very good quarterback. I don't care what you saw tonight. All I can think about is Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett was with the New England Patriots for three years until he got shell shocked, and they let him go. And he hung around. He signed with the Los Angeles Rams, and it, he didn't make that team. And the Raiders picked him up. He only won two Super Bowls. Somebody got him and knew what to do with this guy. He was a great quarterback, and yeah, he won Nick two Foles, Super Bowls. His, his this problem. guy's a good quarterback, and so is Mitch. They're both good quarterbacks. You've got to find out what they could do best and surround them with the people that can do what he can do. That's, that's, the bottom, that's the bottom line. Now, when you can't draft as a high school coach, you've got to do what you can with what you have, and you've got right. to be able to change. Don't. Don't think that this is your offense all the time. Because if they exactly. can't do it, you got to go to something else. And that, I don't see that happening with the Bears. There's good enough players. You've got two great receivers. I think that 12 and 11 are both good receivers. Real oh good. Oh, my God. They are. And I think the tight end, he's got talent. You know, he maybe he's not as the toughest tight end in the world, but he's got talent. He's got to catch the ball, and you got to make things for, happen for him. But – and the I'll running back, you, I Montgomery not being there tonight is a big, big problem because oh, he's yeah. a he's a tough guy. I tell you right now, what a great back he is. And uh, well, Phil, there's not much I could say more that you haven't <laughs> said. You know, the Bears yeah. are just not going to win another game. I don't think. Not playing like this. Totally agree. Unless you, I mean, they had a couple of shots tonight on you know interception. Jalen Johnson could have had one. Eddie Jackson could have had. Could have had one off of a tip there, and it's – but even on defense, and I understand that your defense is out there a whole bunch, but this team continues to play so soft on third and long, it drives me nuts. You're talking and when, about the secondary, yeah. Yeah, and they will get yeah, – they when they when they give up a third and long, it's, it's not even close. It could be third and 12, third and 19, and the guy is wide open. There's nobody around. I just you know, don't get it. You know something? I heard Urban Myers talk the other day. Yeah. When he was talking about, you know, you got two wideouts and they're very good. You can't let them just run hitches on you and beat you. You know, you got eight yards and all of a sudden they make it into 14 yards because they're talented people. And maybe you don't have great tacklers. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what you got to do is you got to come up on them, even right. if it's to disguise it. Because now they know they can't throw that hitch, and then you can release them from the point that they're at. You know, it, it looks like they're going to play and, and pressure them, and then you're going to play man to man, but you're not. You got to disguise things. You can't just lay them out there and off eight to ten yards. They come out with a slot, and they got the corner is eight yards. The other guys are twelve yards, and I'm saying, what, are you kidding me? <laughs> Anybody can complete the ball from there. Exactly. Yeah. They're just not so easy. You got fans yeah. asking you about what you thought of the soft zone coverages called by. I wrote that down right here. Go ahead. Soft Speak coverage in the second series. Yep. Two yeah. soft coverages. TD seven seven nothing. That was it. I wrote. Coach, how how much is the the inept offense playing into that philosophy on defense where they don't want to get beat up over the top for a quick score because the game can be over in the first quarter because you have no offense to rely on. Well, you you got to – I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, your coach comes on here and he's very mellow. 
<laughs> and he's trying to, you know, answer questions to realistically as, as he possibly can or lie one or the other. <laughs> and uh, you don't know what's going on in their locker room. Now, listen, you're on every week. And yeah. some of the people that are listening to you are Bears players. I know. And what happens is they believe it. <laughs> they believe it. This guy's an idiot. And yeah. your defense yeah. is playing their hearts out, and you're doing what you're doing on offense, and they're saying, are you kidding me? What, the, what am I doing here? Yeah. That's, that's a tough thing to do. you got to believe in your coaches. But do you – to back to Shane's question, do you – I don't. I know you don't believe in the philosophy, but do you believe that that's where Nagy has decided to say to the defensive coordinator, "We are not going to man up and put ourselves in a disservice. Being we can't win from behind, so they play soft and they attack with their dominant front. You know those. Let me tell Even you, Roquan, it, it, <laughs> Roquan Smith is a absolute fifty-eight. He is an absolute animal out there yeah. playing with – you got Fuller, H- Smith, uh, Akeem Hicks gets hurt. I mean, they were dominating Yeah, that Look running that back. They yeah, just taking them I, out, hitting them. I don't know and if you saw the – I think it's important while you bring up Akeem Hicks right there, Phil. The, you, I think you saw the text from Ryan Cox. You see what? Akeem Hicks walking off of the field, and he said, it's my hammy, I'm done. I read his lips and said yeah. to Claudio, I go, he said he's done. Yeah. He's like, he did? I go, yeah. So I he either I thought it was like he pulled Well, if this is hamstring, he should be done. He yeah. should be yeah. going out there. He's, yeah. he, he's I thought that's gone. what happened. I saw him running, and all of a sudden he pulled up. Yep. It's and hard. You know, something that's talk, a, talk about you – know, the guy that's 350 pounds running fast as, like, as he was running after that guy, and all of a sudden he pulls it. And it could be worse than you thought it was. He could be out for the rest of the year. Yeah. Well, you look at the safety, number 39. This guy got paid. He's the highest paid safety in the league. You see his effort in tackling. It's just porous. And yeah, I noticed how do you, that. How do you hold that type of player – who's gotten paid a lot of money and is not holding up his end of the bargain in regards to setting the tone and being, they're all reaching up and trying to, this is Chicago. I don't understand how they haven't learned what you've taught. You punch the ball down. You're not going to rip. People are holding the ball. It's very rare. If you punch down on footballs, they come out. These guys are just, tackling and falling they're carried that one play to the tight end he carried five guys for 12 it was what second and 20 he gets 22 it's 22 he's wide open in the fucking zone and he carries five six guys it's they don't care sometimes in the defense is that going to separate the locker room how do you how do you hold a player that's gotten paid accountable well you know something the players sometimes got to hold people accountable you know, that's I can yeah. remember. You know, if you had a kid that wasn't wasn't giving his all, you know, the guys in there beat the crap out of him. And the NFL is no different. Those guys, you, if you're not putting out, they're going to tell you. They are. Well, you hope. They'll tell you. You're and your coaches are going to tell culture. you too. His culture is be you. It's the opposite of everything you've taught me, and I've taught everybody going forward. You have to be together can't be be you you have to be together there this team seems to be fighting one within itself so they're competing let's look at it like this that's what happens all the time you have a great defense and no offense they're gonna they're gonna gonna, tell them they're poor and that's that starts a whole new day it's gonna it's gonna make a a dent a separation of the locker room it's gonna be in fighting and then you got a coach that's in over his head and he wants to be friends with everybody. That shit's gonna fall on deaf ears. Then he's just gonna side. He's only talking with the offense and his quarterbacks. And then all of a sudden, players are gonna start pointing fingers. And now they're five, they were five and one. Think about this. Five and five, and it's gotten worse. Oh yeah, it's gotten it's, worse. Well, they, gotten, they they didn't look too good, even with the five and one, right? That's why they made a quarterback change. 
Yeah, there's and lots of questions. Well, I made the quarterback change week two. Week two. Now, Nick brings him back, and he put the entire onus ownership based on that on Mitch Trubisky, who Mitch Trubisky's a different quarterback. He's a different animal than Nick Foles. So yeah, what is. this was is coach wants to run his offense. This shit, 2.0 with Nick Foles. It hasn't gotten better. It's only gotten worse. It's well, gotten- he, he's, he's not doing what, the, what a guy in a pocket could do. Because that's what he is. He's a pocket passer. He could run. Exactly. But he's not he's not Trubisky. Trubisky's more of a running and throwing kind of guy. Exactly. So this what guy do you is, do? Well, what do you do with a Mitch Trubisky? What you said in the beginning. What a high school coach. You can't draft guys in high school. You have to take what your talent is and and use it in the way. That's what he needed to do with Mitch, and he decided not to. He wanted Mitch to run his offense. His offense that sucks. I don't know what his seen. offense is yet. You know, <laughs> he doesn't know. That's what we're trying to tell people. It's like uh, you can't say you uh, haven't found. We're still sad. looking for our identity. You're still three years. This guy, if he's your OC, he's fired. As your head uh, coach, he should be fired tomorrow. I'm not kidding. This isn't blown smoke or no, ha- I agree. happy time. This is. I don't. Any person that thinks that they think this isn't Matt Nagy. I don't care the ta- you you mentioned all the talent. At the end of the day, you look yourself in the mirror and watch the tape. And I know you, Dad. We would be out there on a Sunday morning, going over goal line and blocking things correctly. We would go over it and over it and over it until it was in our brains. And unfortunately. We're not doing that in Chicago. What we're doing is we're adding more plays. The Wildcat right. this week. Let's. You know something. If I could simplify it, there are some it's... coaches that are have really talented players, mm-hmm. and I don't want to mention his name. And they call plays, and they're very successful. I won't say a guy's name. Okay. He's in the NFL, doing very well. And there are guys that teach and do fundamentals. And the greatest coaches in the world are those guys. Mm-hmm. They're great communicators. They have a reason for everything, and they listen to everybody. So you hire people that are smarter than you, and you all get together because you're the boss. They can't – don't let them fire you, but you listen to them because they have brains. They've done this. Like the guy that was coaching – Tonight was calling the plays. He looks like he's 28 years old, maybe 30 years old. How long has he been in the NFL to be calling those plays? It's stupidity. Stupidity. You want yeah. somebody to call your plays? You put your best man in there. I don't care if he's the receiver coach. If he's been around for 30 years, you put him in there. Let him well, call Lasers, the plays. Lasers called plays, but Shane pointed out the guy's been fired after one year everywhere he's been yeah he's been there a max of two it's one he'll be one year one year one year two years he might squeak out and then it's he's and that's really going all the way back to like 1999 it's he's very short i mean i know that's the coach's life but man it's it literally one year one year he moves along and at some point you have to look at that and be like well that's got to be happening for a reason Yep. Well, a good comment by Adam. He loves his Bears. The same shit year and out. Great deep, yeah. no offense. Every other team in the NFL could put drives together, but it's not us, and it's very difficult to watch. He's right. Yeah. I mean, the fans deserve better because it is the job. It's like this isn't high school. You get paid. You get paid a lot of money, Phil, in the NFL. Exactly. You got to have. A, you got to know what you're doing. You got yeah. to. And, and to me, that's, I set you, they're not getting I the bargain the, with this guy. He's, I set to me, you he's to a terrible them. coach. He's set, one of the worst coaches I've ever seen in the NFL. He should not be in there. He shouldn't be a coach. I would do the same thing. I would fire him tomorrow. It, it should. It's a disgrace. It's, it's God, disgrace. It's, it's so bad. The fans deserve better. Remember I said two weeks ago, three, yeah, it was three weeks ago that I said 
give the guy a break, let him go. Yeah. Oh, it's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> I told you. Listen, let me He's, say this. Let me say this to you. Like, in the NFL, your preparedness is your job. Assignments that are missed. I'm not going to blame Rashad Coward playing right tackle out there. I'm going to blame the head coach. I'm going to. Lewis Riddick and, and, and Greasy pointed out things I've been pointing out for weeks. These tight formations, always in shotgun, get under center, do some things different. Instead, their difference is gimmick. If you can't block simple, like keep it simple, stupid, then how the fuck are you going to block a gimmick? You can't. It becomes a travesty. And it's so disheartening because that defense is so good, it's getting wasted. It's getting wasted. Now, Shane's right. Eddie Jackson and some of these players with the talking. But I, I really feel like Eddie, there's no excuse, but Nichols and, and Urban, they're trying to, like, find some emotion in the game to try to juice up the fucking offense. It, it's already the tidal wave was what, what it was. And, and fans, you can't, you can't, I can't even blame Nick Foles. I can't even blame. I no, showed I don't. you. I, I don't. showed you last week's tape, right? And I said it's the worst coached football team on offense I've ever seen. I went through it. And you I went through every it. play. And what did you think? It's terrible. It's just like well, it's not worse than tonight. This is the worst I've ever seen. But that there's my point. That's do there's you see? no improvement. It's it's got worse. When, just when you think it can't get worse, you become worse. I'm trying to think of the worst football team I've ever seen in the NFL. And I only keep coming back with this team. This offensive team is hidden on the umbrella of this defense. Think about that. He can't even figure out who his best players are. Greasy and, and Lewis Riddick are like this watching the game. It's 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 pretty difficult to watch if you can't admit that you got to hit Allen Robinson here, get him matched up, go to bunches, spread him the fuck out so yeah. your quarterback can have the pocket. Instead, we're going. Let me tell you, he's he's very accurate, but you, you're asking him to step up like a pitcher, really going fast and throw that long ball that he actually that guy should have caught the ball, taking the another step down, before he put his hands out. The fourth you lose your stride play. once you put your hands out. Oh yeah, the, the one, the one to Miller. Anthony Miller. Yeah, to seventeen. Yeah. yeah, number yeah. seventeen continues to just think about the first interception. I want you to talk about this. I talked about it on Facebook, and I got people arguing with me. It wasn't the perfect ball by Nick Foles. It was a little behind, but it hits the dude dead in the fucking diamond. We call it. See the yeah. diamond. This protects yeah. your face. If you throw your hands up like this and you tap that ball, you better fucking eyeball it and catch it. Anthony Miller eyeballs it and tips it up like a volleyball. Yeah. That was on the receiver. Yep. I I rest my case. I I I, I can't continue to watch the same mistakes over and 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 think that it's gonna change. To me, it's unfortunate that Mitch got hurt because I just think Mitch could get you out of this because he could do different things for you offensively. I know that bothers a lot of people, but the reality is the truth in that. It's a Nick Foles issue. It's a Nick Foles issue from everybody. It's a this. Everyone wants to point the finger. It's this guy's issue. It's that. But really, it's a head coach that holds some people accountable, like the punt returner, and not the left tackle. Not he holds Mitch accountable, but not the right tackle, or not this person, and so on and so forth. There tweet from go. tweet from Kyle Long tonight. Harry Heastan would have killed someone by now. Forget waiting until film tomorrow. You would be dead or fired. 
That's from That's, a former Chicago Bears player, Kyle Long. That's Kyle Long, Dad. You met him Should in Cleveland, remember? He's yeah. He's been jabbing at Matt Nagy for three months, saying, "Yeah." He said Matt that he Nagy's would. The he answer. said if the Bears wanted him, he would come back, but he just wouldn't come back to play for this coaching staff. He said that la- He said that last year. Oh, listen, you can't be friends first. Tough no. love, accountability, respect. Then comes admiration and friendship after that. Because you right. have to be the leader of men. I remember being so afraid to mess up because you will flip out. And being a coach's son, it was like doubly because you had all eyes on you within the locker room. You had fans thinking you're only playing because you're the coach's son. And then I don't want to let you down. So I fucking worked that much harder. So excite you have to be able to find in your heart. You have to be able to pull the right strings with people. How do you get toughness out of 72? How do you do it? You sit them down. You put people in positions or places they feel embarrassed or uncomfortable, and you allow them to work that shit out. Because if you can't do it across the board, and I'm talking with Khalil Mack too. Every fucking player on the same level. Then you're never going to win the locker room where it matters on the field. Anybody hey, could be friends with these guys. This hey coach Shane. is great. Yep. Uh, he just said he was worried about whether he was going to screw up and let his father down on the team. He was a damn good back, I got to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't embarrass me one bit. Wow, and I, I never that. worried about that. There was those two fumbles, though, Coach. I didn't even know them then, but I heard about them. Right. I never we fumbled. We all good backs fumble. <laughs> That's I right. Only fumbled, I fumbled. only fumbled once my sophomore year on Thanksgiving in the mud. Do you remember that? I don't remember that, Phil. Oh, I got freaking popped in the backfield on a belly play. That was 1989? That was, yep, 1989. Running a belly dive, I got friggin' lit in this mud. It was remember it snowed, but then it got real warm that morning. Yeah. Anyway, it's become muddy. That's yeah. it. That was the last time I ever fucking put the ball. I almost did it one time diving over the pile against Amity for a touchdown. It popped out of my hand. I grabbed. It. Anyway, <laughs> fucking reminiscing over here, like a, we got shoe well, salesman. Anyway, we got a know, shoe it's... salesman in Chicago as the head coach. That's the problem. That's the issue. We have a guy that was given the job because he is friends with Andy Reid, who has this dynamic offense, and anybody could call fucking plays there. Freaking Joey Smith at the he he hard he holds the uh, <laughs> local arcade. He's he does quarters on the weekend, handing them out. He could call plays. My son Tate could call plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's how much talent they have there. That's and really Matt Nagy, Matt Nagy, is from that tree. He was hand delivered to this franchise. <clears throat> so everything. Listen, anybody defending this coach, there's nowhere to hide. This is you. This is on you. you this is your team. This is your thing. Now, if you're not a subscriber to the Patreon channel, right there, www.thetapeneverlies.com. Tonight we had issues with our YouTube channel. So normally, I'm just getting all these DMs and texts and I can't respond, but normally we're on YouTube on our network page. We'll upload this show here to it afterwards there's a technical thing going on with our youtube the tape never lies youtube channel so if you're a subscriber there and wondering where this show is we've tried to put out plenty of messages to you those of you on facebook live you're seeing us here and we're on shy city sports our sponsor for keeping it 100 every wednesday night but usually we're on Wednesdays. This week we'll be on Thursday 
And we got some breaking news, Shane, for this Thursday night show. And I think it's going to be something big because the guest that we have is going to have a lot of good insight to what it is that we're going to be doing. Breaking news. The Saint Never Lies Network. Breaking news. Yeah, breaking news here at the Tape Never Lies Network. This Thursday night, we're moving our show because we're up late this night. And Wednesday, Shane has a family obligation. So we're going to go Thursday night. We might as well, every time we go Monday or Sunday, move it to Thursday. Yeah, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. We are excited to announce to you guys, you loyal TTNL fans that we are going to have former Bears tight end Zach Miller jumping on the show with us to break down the Chicago Bears, this coach. He's been in the John Fox locker room. He's been in the Matt Nagy system. So he'll give us some great insight to what is going on here. He didn't really. He wasn't with Nagy, but. We no, get your he's, point. The next year, Nagy hired him, remember? And he became a a player coach. Remember he had that role? Yeah, there was something, maybe the like an advisor or something. Yeah. Yeah, he was so he you know, he was there, so he has a good understanding of Coach Nagy. I know he was calling straight out for Mitch Trubisky a few weeks ago saying, Put my boy Mitch. Mitch please was his, his quote, right? Yeah, it's from his his T-shirt, yeah. We're going to ask him that. We're going to ask him a lot of stuff about this offense and what we will be doing. It's going to be a good show. Thursday night this week, keeping it 100. Hopefully the YouTube channel will be up and running by then and get rid of this issue. That's the business side of it, Shane. This coach, this offensive coordinator, they switched up the play calls. Did you see much of a difference? Much of a difference. I, I saw a lot of question marks that Phil, you and I are talking in real time. I mean, I, I cannot get out of my head that third and five where you're not sending at least one guy on a slant. We've been talking he, he sent he sent all three wide receivers deep with an offensive line that can't pass block. On there third four, and five. There was four. Yeah, it's four just going out deep. And it's four receivers. <laughs> I just you and have asking them to protect. You have and a not tight one, end. Not one yeah. of them ran across the middle of the field. Yeah. You, no, you no. have not a ro- a rookie tight end that's six six, two sixty or whatever he is, and well, you don't want to take it up and get a first. Exactly. <laughs> it's I mean Oh, I just don't I maybe they just really do overthink each and every single situation but to me like you said coach keep it simple stupid uh you know Matt Nagy said himself that him handing off the play calling duties was going to let him uh concentrate more on situational football and then he's like if I have to if I hear a call you know that I don't agree with yeah I'm going to be I'm going to uh, have the ability to step in and you know nix it or whatever. But I mean, third and third and five, and you're calling a screen with uh, this is nothing against the wide receiver, but that's not his game at all, at all. Like Phil said, he's not a he's not a quick twitch guy. It's just the Bears are at the point now where if you think that they can do something crazy, that's exactly what they're going to do. Where it makes no sense, and I. How do you get out of it other than launch? I mean, cleaning, cleaning the deck and launching all these guys. Well, yeah. <laughs> nobody has the answers to those questions. Right. Well, unfortunately, I don't think any of this is going to change. Even if you clean the deck, it's 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 a it's above it's a pay grade higher than the general manager. It's the team president, and it's it goes all the way up to ownership. And unfortunately. Right, wrong, or indifferent. I know that this sounds horrible, but none of this is going to change until Mrs. McCaskey passes away and the kids want to cash in on the billion-dollar team that they happen to own. That's Those are just facts, and I know it sounds awful. I'm not wishing ill 
on her or, or anything, but it's, listen, Phil said this for years and it's true. You have to be maniacal about what you do and the Bears aren't. They just, they're a mom, they're a billion dollar franchise that's run like a mom and pop store. It's, yep. it's, it's terrible. And they have one of the most rabid fan base. Here we are watching that crap that we watched tonight. We don't have access to our YouTube page, but we still have over 400 people here live listening to what we're saying, you know, 1230 in the morning on the East Coast. And it all everybody here that's a Bears fan deserves better. But that I just don't think (laughs) this franchise cares. It's the bot their bottom line and their top line is dollars. That's it. Winning is very, very low on the totem pole. Well, to go back to the uh, Dub Williams with the question about the offensive line, the GM is to blame, yes. But at the professional level, yeah, there's talent there that can be coached up to do what you need to get done on Sundays, and they're not coached well. The fundamental, like Ryan Pace can't go out there and start coaching. Them. Well, that's the thing, Phil. A lot of the, people's rebuttal to that is saying that it's the execution. Well, if you're not coached well, if that's not pounded in, just like Coach said, it's the best coaches are the ones that are stressing fundamentals constantly. That are preaching it, Especially and they're gonna in this sport exactly. You can't just go out there where draw inches plays. matter. Yes, you can't draw plays and then think that these linemen are gonna just block it up for you, and you're gonna hit the you know the curl and the double out, and then the move, and then we're gonna run wildcat. Oh, we got it all planned. We're gonna run reverse. We're gonna run toss. We're not gonna kick out. We're not gonna we're not gonna run one counter play. Not one count. Nothing to counter off itself. So. The blame to me, obviously, is twofold, and I know it's difficult for some people, but there's talent there on the offensive line. They're just so poorly coached. There's no accountability. There's no fundamentals there. It's the worst I've ever seen in the NFL. My dad doubled down on it. You didn't think you could get worse than last week against the Titans. And then you come out on Monday Night Football, and you have every opportunity. you got a kick return. How many teams have lost a game with a kick return touchdown? I think the the percentage is is astronomical that you usually win with that. Bears couldn't even do that. He can't get out of his own way. You can argue, should he kick the field goal, kick it off to them, stop them, get the ball back, and try to win the game or tie it? Those are coaching situational things that this guy just doesn't get. Instead, we're going to try to drop back Nick steps up and yes i'm gonna break it down on the tape to see should anthony miller have caught that ball I've watched it 15 times but i want to see the coach's angle does he throw his hands up too early you'll be able to see that on the all 22 because it's a coaching point this guy's done that many a times before and i've had a lot of fans debate me on it you could talk about that coach when you're running your route and you're going to the post or you're running the fade, if you throw your hands up too early, you what lose, happens? You lose your stride. The stride you lose your slows. stride and your speed. So now the anticipation of where the quarterback is throwing the ball to drop to, you at full speed, also gets thrown off a hitch. So in yep. a game of inches, there's seconds. Think about that. Yep. A guy runs a 40 in 4.4 seconds, right? Think about how many inches are gained in that time. I'm not even a mathematician, and I break this down to these nerds that think they have it all figured out. A guy can run 40 yards in 4.3 seconds. He can get to the football. If the ball, if you're running through it, you're going to catch it. If you can't, you dive. You've seen it with uh, Allen Robinson before. All of these little intricacies, I feel like this team is not coached maniacally. They're coached on plays they're coached on this is how we run our offense they're not coached on fundamentals and that it shows at the end of the day that is the fucking stake in the heart for this guy that's what gets people thrown out of town and really ultimately 
that's where I've been for three years with this guy. I've seen, I've seen the storm. I've seen the shit before the storm. It is not good, and it's never going to get better. And you can make all the excuses you want for this guy, but it, it's really it falls on the shoulders of the coach, to my in my opinion, because I want I wanted to say one thing about receivers. Yes, that uh, that I learned from Sam you know, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. That you, you're never going to get open unless you press. You have to press every single play. And you have to get your ability to make, you know, man to man, you you, just, you put a move on a guy. When you're in zone, you can't, you can't do that. But you can get open because you don't need the speed. But you got to press and you got to keep working. If you're a wide receiver, you, you got to be working for his outside shoulder. He's got to believe you're going to run a fade. Then you can run a curl or you can run a hitch. Mm-hmm. Or you can run it out. And if you don't run it in his outside and you're running out, he is going to get to the ball. So if you run to his inside and you're running out, he's, he's got an interception. So you, those are fundamental things you gotta, you got to learn. 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 Excuse me. I'm sorry. Well, but I'm uh, I don't see that. I think some great coaches, if you look at the great, great coach teams, they run great patterns. They separate. They have speed, but you shouldn't be in the NFL if you don't have speed. <laughs> Am I right? You draft Absolutely. a kid, it's a and he runs lead. a four six forty. He don't belong as a receiver. He won't be up. He won't be playing receiver. You can make him a tight NFL. end, but you can't make him a wide out. You just Unless can't do it. Unless he's the greatest route runner you've seen, like a Steve Largent or a Tom Waddle, that lived yeah. on the art of the route and we're able to press and be twitchy, then you can get a 4-6 yeah. guy yeah. to sneak in there. But nowadays, based on what they're trying to do, I just you got to be that fast, and there's no excuse for putting you know, your it's, hands up it's, too it's, early. You're such in a rhythm. You're in a rhythm with your quarterback. He knows that you're going to break now, and the ball's released. You know, It's, it's that good if you're going to be good. Otherwise, it, it can't be good. You don't wait till the guy breaks and you throw the ball because the defensive guy could get the ball as soon as he can. This is and the guys on great. defense are faster than the guys on offense. They get drafted that way. <laughs> that Am I right? Great, yeah. That was a great line by Dub Williams. Uh, Nagy says this all the time. It's very good. I never really pointed out. I'm glad you did. They know we can't have that. They know we can't have that. That means... In coach speak, in politics, it means I'm not holding anybody accountable. They should know. And that's really what it shows up on the tape. The same thing shows up on the tape. Now, you look at guys out there, some positives that you see. I mean, a lot of people are hard on uh, Robert Quinn because of his sack numbers. I'm just watching him play. I just, he plays hard. He's playing hard, and they're going quick game, and they're running bootlegs to get. So you can't get to those third and longs. So it's very difficult. You saw the fucking uh, Vikings tackle Khalil Mack on three or four plays. Finally, they called one. And it's hard for these guys to be successful uh, on defense if you have no offense. It's really hard to be a pass rusher because you're not going to put Kirk Cousins in these situations where he's going to try to win the game for you because he's not. So that's where just having a decent offense, you beat Minnesota 28 to three tonight. Like if you just had a decent offense and that's the truth, that's how bad and poorly coached your football team is. It's like West Haven. They always had these great talent, toss left, toss right. Anybody could beat you. You have so much more talent than anybody. You just don't know how to use it. That's the problem. Fundamentals. Uh, Adrian, I saw Adrian. He's 100% right. You could be so outmatched, so outmatched in talent. But if you play with fundamentals and sound fundamentals and aggressiveness, you could be in every game. So I know this is – you can just just look at New England. You could try to blame the GM all you want. It really lies exactly. And I hate the fact that we're repeating ourselves over and over. Then we got JJ Stankovitz coming on here, and he's starting to lean. You know, he's, uh, yeah, it's Nagy, isn't it? 
And now everybody's starting to see the national media. But Rex Ryan, uh, uh, dad, the former Shelton quarterback, Dan Orlovsky, calling. Yeah, I saw him on TV today. <laughs> calling Matt Nagy a fraud. He's not a teacher. A coach that can't teach is a fraud. It's his exact quote. You coach is that against what he said? that kid. That's exactly what he said. Oh, I, think, I wish I said Yeah, he said right. it's like. He said it's like being married and trying to make your wife do everything that you like to do and never do what she likes to do. It's going to end in divorce, and that's exactly where the Bears and Matt Nagy are headed, and he's he's 100% right. right. Well, he, he might have got himself fired tonight, too. Let's hope so. Just to, it, just listening to him, you can imagine. I, I mean, there should have been a little spunk. I'm so oh, a- been... aggravated at this. This oh, is ridiculous. You know? Phil, <laughs> ask even that. that. You know, the guy that they turned over play calling duties, uh, Bill Lazor, oh my God. in his press conference when right after it broke that he was going to be calling plays, the first question that was asked him, they said, now, Bill, you know, um, you're preparing for a Minnesota team and you, you're bringing a losing streak into this game. And he goes, well, Minnesota doesn't have a losing streak. And, and they said, no, you, you do, coach. You have a you have a losing streak, and he said, "No, no, we don't. No, we don't." He goes, he goes no, "Do we? We don't. we don't believe that in this locker room. We've we've turned the page on that. We're not on a losing streak." Well, that's a good positive thought, but but it's it's it it's, it's 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 definitely positive, yeah. But it's exactly it does sound very ridiculous. This isn't the art of Zen where yeah. you're trying to like positive it into the universe and make it not real. This is football oh, and. You are what your record is, and you are terrible, and you are on a losing streak. So you lost. Remember that movie? What was it? Um, Jerry Maguire, when he's like, the girl goes, you had me at hello. Remember that? Yeah. Well, this fucking guy lost us at that presser when he said, we're not on a losing. How is he going to call plays? He, he doesn't even know the rest. You're losing, coach. That's the only reason why you have this job. To call the plays because the guy in front of you is the leader supposedly of men and a guru has had to give it over to you. And he secretly has a campaign that he wants you to fucking suck because then he could say, it's the team that sucks. The GM sucks, not me. This is like an episode of Seinfeld. It's like George Costanza sleeping under the fucking desk all day. <laughs> then he gets up. That was a tough day at work, guys. Let me go back. Let's run fucking. Let's run Wildcat. That's what this. It, it's it's such a. If he's not fired tomorrow, there should be a strike of fans at Hallis Hall. That's if he's gotta not, be gone. He's not, gotta be gone. It's, he does. I agree, Phil. But it's it's, it's it never gonna lasting. it's never gonna happen. Remember how he pushed back oh, at Cody uh, White. It, it's only a it's a matter of time. Yeah, oh I I agree. I just don't think can, that they'll do it This guy can yeah. never come back to. He can't come back to coach this team next year. No fucking way. There's after this, we said it. I said it. I know. National stage, given over the play calling. You've benched Mitch. You made all this shit. 2.0. My offense. I'm the guru. This, we're going to get it right. And you play worse than you did against the Titans. It In a game that you you should be blowing the Vikings out. Let's be honest. The fucking the Vikings. Come on. It's terrible. And they got a good honestly, defense, though. They're well, they're well coached defensively. And incidentally, Phil, yeah, I don't like Cousins. I mean, I never liked him. Yeah, but those two receivers he had—they're excellent receivers. Yeah. That young oh, kid, yeah. that first-year that player, kid. Jefferson. He's, he runs great patterns. Loved him. And he's I, like I a, a ten-year veteran out there on that play. I thought I was so impressed with that kid. Yeah. Well, Dad, I know you've been up late. I want to thank you. Coming well, I just with hope us. I hope you you know you you want me on you know I I don't want to be a burden to you guys. <laughs> no, you're not a um, burden at we all. Got, we got fans excited about you. If you're not a member of the Patreon, me and my father, it's gonna be a hard time. Once we get after the buy, we're working on producing an open and everything like that to get me and my dad to break down critical plays in the game get you involved the fans love you they tell me every week more of your dad 
get bring him on. Look at him. You can see. Can you read him, Coach? We got a guy in the waiting room who probably loves hearing from you. You got your neighbor. Look at this Ooh. guy. There he is with the hoodie. Look at him. <laughs> Claudio over Who's there. Look at him. Oh, Claudio. See? How you doing? He, What's up, Coach? He thought he was a mug. He I'm, was a mugger. I'm trying to hide. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll be calling plays next seen. week for the Bears. This team is so bad, I don't want to be seen talking about them. Uh, it's uh, you got to stick with your team. Got to get rid of yes. the coach. That's all. There you go. You got. Guys when I went to that Chicago, I couldn't believe the the amount of people that were Bear fans. Oh my God, they oh hadn't won me. They hadn't won in a while. Bear fans just worldwide. Unbelievable. Worldwide, you can go to any state. And wear a Bears T-shirt or a Bears hat, and somebody's in Bear down. So you got <laughs> look at this, Coach. You're awesome tonight, Coach O. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Coach. Nice, nice talking to you guys. I enjoyed it. And well, we uh, don't worry you. about how late it is. So the only problem I'm going to have is uh, the Monday oh. of uh, what was it the, the December seventh? Whatever, oh, yeah. the, whatever you're playing, I'll be being operated on. Or, yeah, I didn't know if you wanted me to tell. I did tell our patronage. So if my father's going in for heart surgery. So you not sir, hold it. Let's get that correct. I'm going in what for a procedure. It? It's okay, going through the groin. I'm not I'm, no open heart surgery. Thank God. Yeah. So, so I'm happy to hear that. I, yeah, I need a aortic valve replacement. That's what I need. And they do it through the groin. Can you believe it? I think a lot of us would like to perform groin surgery on our head coach. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you a bunch of things. You're not talking about castration. No. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever works. <laughs> well, say well, some listen, prayers. Guys, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm glad you did. Now you're going to have some prayer change. Prayer chains. For you, yes. If you can send some positivity, I'm a big believer of positivity. I know my dad always says this famous quote. You want to say it tonight? You gotta have so God just, in your life. You gotta have God in your never life. Never left the field without saying that to the kids. Gotta and you know something? I had a couple of kids come to me mm -hmm. and tell me, Coach, I didn't understand what you were talking about, but boy, do I know it now. Yeah. You know? Right. So you change a lot. You change a lot of people's lives when you're doing the right thing and you care about kids or players. It does make a difference on any level. You got to care about those players. Pros, college, high school doesn't make a difference. Little league. Incidentally, you got a couple of kids there. I can't wait to see play. Oh my yeah. God, they got some. We got some talent. It's the Atosian yeah. boys. They're calling yeah. them in the town of Meriden already. They got yeah. a reputation. <laughs> anyway that's cute prayers to you obviously i'll see you before then yeah we'll be you, back you, on the show again there's a bye week next week yeah oh next week are, is not bears okay. are on a bye next week then i'm gonna see you thanksgiving Green Bay packers yes i'll be there hopefully the covid mess doesn't hinder all the thanksgiving visits and governors and all that but yes if you want more of my dad right there on the lower bar, the tape never lies .com. You talk, I saw someone say about a coach's clinic. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to be putting up all 22, the coach's tape. And me and my dad are going to be breaking it down live where you can ask the questions. He's going to give you the answers. If we're debating, it makes for even greater television. It's going to be fun. But usually we agree on things like that. So I agree that you did a great job tonight. I love you. You have a good night. Yeah, and you too. We'll talk tomorrow. Shane, Shane, nice talking. To, nice talking to you guys. And Claudio, say hello to your family for me too. Thanks, Coach. He's, he's waving to you there. there okay, buddy. Hey, what's the matter? Take care. You, good, luck. You. good luck. God good bless luck, you guys. <laughs> I know a few people that had that procedure. You'll be good. It's easy. <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah. All right. There you yep. go. All yep. right, man. All right, coach. I love him. He brings it, Claudio, every of time. Course. Breaking it down. Got a little emotional there. I wasn't expecting the the breaking news. He broke it. I did share yeah. it with the patrons. And that was it's emotional because you know, it's your dad. 
it's life and life right. is not easy you know i thought it was life pretty uh easy. pretty awesome what he said about your high school days too you know he's he said he always I made him proud to, he always made him proud i don't like to talk about it. you guys Exactly. That's how, I, my dad likes to talk about. I just set I that think, up for Shane. He did. I just I don't like really talk about my high no. school performance. But so we will. Sometimes. We gotta bring it. We gotta bring in our boy because he's been waiting forever. It's his birthday. Oh uh, yeah, past you know, his birthday now. Maybe past, we just well, skip him. Past his birthday. Not here. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> he's been, Maybe he's oh, got a kid. <laughs> yeah. After that, what up, what up? On. he brought him in too early every time it's 100 crew hot takes phil and shane bringing on a fan to talk bears and what just happened in the bears game each and every week you have to have hype phil's always telling me to hype you can't be flat so be ready, be prepared, and bring your passion. And I'm coming out of my ass. It's 100 Brew Hot Takes. Hashtag Spencer Strong. Those are big time fucking throws. It's Bears Hour Live. Bring it on the fans. One of our favorite guys, patron member. Also, one of the leaders of our swag department. We had a big meeting today. It's your birthday. Shane, I know you've been excited for Alex to come on like nobody else. You... It's the uh, it's the highlight of my day. Obviously, I thought it was going to be the Bears game, but then I heard Ace was coming on. Yeah, I don't know how you can Alex, be excited after that game. That was pitiful. Yeah how how do you what are your thoughts on the game here? Well, you seen your birthday. You're coming in flat. No. It's... After that, yeah, this you got it coming. Fly. Audio delayed by like twelve seconds. No, <laughs> yeah. is it on your end? Big time. Really? really? Yeah. It sounds he's coming in clear for me. Go ahead. No, you gotta bring the hype, me. man. No, after that, how can you have any hype? Matt Nagy is a horrible head coach. He needs to be. He's done. You gotta get rid of him. Look, I thought Bill Lazor came out. You know, he had, he had a good first drive there, but, I mean, you got to dumb this offense down. I mean, look look what the Vikings did. Simple boot action. They, they schemed everything around the pass rush. Everyone's complaining about Robert Quinn not getting in. Khalil Mack, look what he did. That's, that's what Khalil Mack is. He makes plays. He ripped out of Adam Thielen's hands, took it up. Put a, Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Nagy's a Matt Nagy's a fraud. I'm so sick of this guy. It, it's, I mean, what is there to say about this guy? Nothing positive. Nothing. Yeah. And then it's still gimmicky with the wildcat. Look, the eye formation, run the football. You know, I, I'm excited to see Mitch Trubisky. Maybe he could. If Mitch was in there today, he would have made plays with his feet, extended drives. You know, but. What do I know? Everyone wanted foals and look, look. It all unveiled itself. Matt Nagy's a fraud. Every, it was a blame game on everybody, and it all prevailed at the end. Well, not a good way to kick off. What are you, 31 today? 31, yeah. How old is Akeem Hicks? It was his first. 31. Game. You're both born on the same day, probably in the same day. Twins. Hospital. Twins. They look alike. Look they up. do. <laughs> Came right. in with a lot of hype. <laughs> it's hard, but you got to bring the passion of frustration. Tap into that. Think of you as a coach looking at this team or letting being let down. I mean, to me, I love this game of football so much. I, I can't even tell you. It's an honor to have my dad come on here. He's 80 years old and living, you know. Of any NFL team in this in this in the NFL, out of all teams, Chicago deserves a winning team. It's it we've had, it's, it's well it's too consistency. Too yeah, it's consistent. I, it's I'm never, done. That's never. the thing in Chicago. The Chicago Bear way is to. 
They'll start over. They'll start to bring in some talent. You get one good year. Everybody gets hyped up, and then it's right back to the drawing board. I said it back in 28. Yeah, exactly. Back up, Back up. (laughs) Back the fuck up with your truck and pack your shit to get out of town. It's really gotten bad. I, mean, I said it to you guys a couple of weeks ago on the phone. I said the defense can only do so much. And and then you got yeah. people out there, well, the defense well, the defense can only do so much. That offense, oh, my God. I don't understand the con- – if it's zero, why aren't you running just a simple slant? Get it quick. Get it out there. Get it to Allen Robinson. Yeah. I mean, I don't get it, man. It's, it's the same stupidity with this team. You can't be you. You got to be together. I always say it, the team is a reflection of the head coach. Claudio puts it right up on the same time I'm saying. Look, back, back I say when it I... every week on the tape never lies. You see the mistakes. You see it over and over and over. You can't tell me in any department that's running this franchise that they're not watching the same tape, that they're not watching the embarrassment, the lack of communication, the lack of fundamentals, the lack of ability to blitz pick up. The lack of ability to find an identity for three years, trading Jordan Howard out of town, benching Mitch Trubisky, the shit that went down with Kyle Long. Obviously, he's calling out this guy. Kyle Long comes from a fucking football bred family. You think his dad would allow him to be fucking talking like this about a coach? You don't do that. You don't do. He's doing it because uh, his da- dad, Howie, probably knows. That this is a shoe salesman. Lovey Smith got fired at ten and six. Don't tell me tomorrow you can't fucking do this. You got plenty of money to turn this around. Let the fans know that you care. It's a sad state with this organization. It's what exactly what Shane said. We said it last week and the week before with Olin Krutz, and we've been breaking this shit down like nobody else does. People with their hands out, the family wanting money. And not wanting wins. Let me tell you a little secret, McCaskey family. You're not cheap. Never going to say that. You're not. But where you are stupid is surrounding yourself with people that are cheap. They're cheap to get to where you are. They're cheap peep hires. The Ted Phillips is counting pennies. Fucking That's how Mill cheap House. he is. You can Millhouse and all of that you got to get rid of. And turn this fucking thing around. Get a president in here that loves football like the Atoshans love football. Hire a maniacal head coach. I don't care how old the motherfucker is. If he's the young guy that knows the game, that studies the game, or he's an older gentleman that knows the game, I don't care. I want to see somebody in a position of power that loves the game of football and will do anything for the Navy blue, orange, and white. If that means benching a problem child, like an Anthony Miller, sit his ass on the bench, then he's in control. You know, a lot of people say a lot of shit about Rex Ryan. I I can tell you one thing. He held people accountable, just like his dad. Those types of personalities are the things that have won in Chicago in the past. And it's sad because the old man, Hallis, was just like that. I mean, he he held Gale Sayers Dick Buckus, anybody accountable to do what was best for the team was his fucking drive to make the NFL what it is. And we're still sitting here with mediocrity, with politics, with worried about money and stadiums. Shane, what did JJ say? Well, I don't know if they could fire Pace because he really built the fucking... Who the fuck? cares that he built Hallis Hall. Anybody exactly. could have done that. What has it done what, for you? What has it what done has for done? you? It's gonna draw on a good free agent? Who? If Eddie? That's about as dumb as this. <laughs> <laughs> we got another bam bam. Oh my gosh. Listen. Yeah, we have to be able to laugh about something. That's all I got, man. It's, it's all we got hey, to so let me ask you this. Real quick. Okay, if Foles comes up to the line it's zero coverage. Why doesn't yes. he audible? Why doesn't he make a change? You've seen it. how many third downs was it zero coverage? Almost every third down, he was well, four. Yeah, they're going to blitz every down, so they're why running I, why, up. So I, I why? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Why are they in tight? 
Why are they right. doing these? These things drive me. You have no idea. Imagine cutting 48 minutes of that. It's That means I watched over two hours of it. No, I need to get cutting you it up. down. I need to hear you live because I'm keep uploading my phone to see what you're saying after every play. It's, it's unbelievable. It's un fucking believable. Yeah, we're gonna do for Patreon. We're gonna go live, watch the sh- the game with the fans. Obviously, probably not putting it on the thing. We're all just gonna watch it together. I don't know what the rules are there, but the reality is that'll happen. Audible. Exactly. They don't even know how to do simple things. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, well, the blame game is ran out for Matt Nagy. The time is now. You need to make a change. Dumb this playbook down. And look, we got to get some wins here in Chicago. This is well. They did that when they did that. They were doing what was best for the team when Mitch was in there with the playbook. The offensive line was different. Yeah, I know we've had some injuries and COVID and all that, but. As soon as Nick Foles got in there, it was back to I'm going to do exactly what I want to do, and I'm not going to do what's best for the football team. So here we are, yeah, five and one, and now you're five and four. Yeah, it's every no, it was every week. Five. Or five and five. five. Yeah, sorry. We're yeah, five and five. We're yeah, dead we're... even. Yeah. And people said it couldn't happen, but it did happen. Anyway. Happy birthday to you, brother. Thanks, man. Really make a quick announcement. This week, a lot of you have been asking about swag. We had a great meeting today with our swag gal over there in Illinois. Uh, We also had a meet, obviously, you, Alex, and Chris Sandlin, our co-host of swag. Our cohort? How do we say that? Cohort. Cohort. Go ahead. You guys are taking care of the swag. We know you love the Tape Never Lies Network. Don't get it twisted because of the stupid coach and stuff. We're the voice. We're your voice. We are not going to stop. You You guys were saying it before everybody, man. This guy's a fucking fraud. Now it's coming out. We could, You could try to shut us down, but we're not. So we're going to rise up with you guys and keep it 100 we're going to call this team out. <laughs> we had a great a week, great of, week practice. of practice. Swag right. team. <laughs> exactly. Actually, this week, by Friday, the swag website will be up with some limited items. So if you want to get some Tape Never Lies Network items, that will be up later this week. So obviously keeping it 100 will be Thursday. we got Zach Miller coming on with us going to be a great show the former bears tight end zach miller you remember his career you don't remember uh against the saints he had that horrific injury wow. and al riveron they ripped him the, off man with the smoking Terrible. gun ripped him off terribly he's going to be on the show we're going to talk about everything so you got to be ready got to bring the hype better than alex yeah, although man. alex tough night Man, I, I wanted that Bears win, man. They should have won this. It was a winnable game. Winnable game, of course, in Bear right. fashion. It was tough. But anyway, this week, Swag Shop Friday, right, Alex? Yep, it'll be up. And we're going to have hoodies, T-shirts. Yeah, the T-shirt. Uh, long sleeve T-shirts, those tape never lies stuff, and some surprise stuff. And then we'll be working more stuff into it. We got some hat designs coming. You'll like them. Shane's designing all the hats. He's a hat man. He's not all of them. Not all. You got a whole whole room full of hats. I know. (laughs) I used to, but yeah, I got grounded. A lot of them got thrown away, but I bought I bought a bunch more. I appreciate you coming on the show tonight, bro. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. All right, brother. Go Bears. Bear down. (laughs) There's a lot of bear down to go around. It's amazing to me, Shane, how this team is built. Same old, same old. They're built to be inept from the top to the bottom, unfortunately. I totally agree with you. What's up, Matt Byers? I'm going to answer some of your questions. Obviously, on a loss like this, pathetic. 
it's hard to get up for. You saw Alex, you know, I don't blame him. I'm not going to hold it. I'm not going to hold him accountable tonight for not bringing his passion and fire. But I'm trying to bring, I was struggling. That fucking third down screen play to Allen Robinson did it in for me, man. Me too. I fucking stormed out of this room. I didn't even see the fourth down play until Shane texted it to me. And I cannot, cannot even tolerate the bullshit excuses and the finger pointing it directly as the head coach came here. Let's keep it 100. He came here as an offensive guy. People gave him the guru and this and that, and they had success. And that happens sometimes. People aren't used to you. You get a lot of breaks. You look back on that season. Fucking Mitch Trubisky made some plays that people just forget. Defense making <clears throat> big plays, thirty nine fucking turnovers, thirty nine, <laughs> thirty nine. Do you think that had something to do with it? How many defensive touchdowns? I think it was eleven. Eleven. I'm I'm totally guessing there. It could be more or less. Take this it's for what it's worth, but Akeem Hicks tweeted out, "We good." Talk. I'm assuming it's he's talking about. Himself, he's so gonna get some stem. He's gonna get some stem on that hand. He's got two weeks. Treatment. Two weeks to get straight. But Greg Braggs, Greg Bragg sent out a tweet right yeah. when it happened, and he said, "You saw this defense, you know, really. I don't want to say fall apart because they didn't fall apart, but when he's not out there, it's it is different for damn sure." I thought they actually stepped up there. Oh, they they played well, but they're proud of them. Yeah, they're they're definitely not. They're definitely not the same. Yeah, they're not the same. Imagine if they had him and Goldman, Eddie Goldman in there. This kid McCullers, he keeps impressing me. They all really rose to the. He's a big boy. All these games were winnable. Let's get to a few questions, and I'll say some positives. Here's my positives, real quick. Uh, Roquan Smith, he's an absolute beast. He he really is. He's becoming that fixture that we would hope that he would be. Anthony Miller is a punt returner. That's it. That's where he's at. Put him back and return punts. Take him off. We've seen enough. The letdowns, the one play that he makes there's four that are bad that's not good math i'm not a mathematician shane (laughs) but if you do one thing good and then you do four things bad thereafter at some point the one thing good doesn't outweigh the four that are bad get him out we've been saying it put ridley in put mooney in the slot Start using that speed to attack the middle seam and get fucking 22 the fuck out of there. Because I tell you right now, if he's in the slot and he's running straight through the seam, it just baffles me, Shane, how they don't even know how to use Mooney half the time. They make one play and then they take step seven steps back. I don't see, I don't see positivity from Eddie Jackson. I no, he's say. he's. He he's been my bear down I think two weeks in a row Phil on on keeping it a hundred and he's like I said he went after Derrick Henry up top and it's not how you're gonna you're not gonna survive doing that it just it's exactly. not sustainable and it's really really dumb football I I want to take out the refs the shot to Nick Foles in the head should have been a penalty and what a crazy fucking way that they did you hear the 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 in-house referee the in broadcast referee on the final play or no no no, on the one when Foles got hit in the head yeah no what did he say he said sometimes as a referee when you're playing a clean game oh my god i did hear this i'm like what we gotta pull that for keeping yeah that's the entire reason you're there (laughs) i want to hear what zach miller had to say about that i know exactly he said it was a clean call game that didn't call much penalties. And sometimes you're kind of in a lull where you're kind of not paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, 
What? It's crazy. You gotta make the call. It was a fucking penalty to Nick Foles' head. I'm trying out. The, we found a kicker. Yeah, Santos, Mr. Consistency. Santos is our kicker. I'm trying to find positives for people. I really believe my dad's right. I think Mooney and Allen Robinson, you got to re-sign Allen Robinson. You, you can't take even more steps back, bro. I this mean, he's, he's, so he's, I mean, I don't know if he's even going to be willing unless they overpay him in a grotesque way. I mean, I think it's headed for Tagsville. Honestly, Phil, because I mean, you yeah. saw him throwing his helmet on the sidelines, and oh, it's did he? Yeah, yeah, he did. He t- he ripped his helmet off and fired it across the sideline, and and I, I don't blame him at all. But I just, you know, he's he's still a young guy, even though he's been in the league for seven years. You know, he's twenty seven years old, so he he's got a lot of playing left, and he's <laughs> he's come from. Blake Bortles to to Mitch Trubisky to to Nick Foles and that's not exactly a who's who of NFL quarterbacks. You're probably right. I see Stewart saying he ain't re-signing after the disrespect. Well, it's not. It's, it's yeah. It's not. This is. Let's. When I say that, yeah. his future isn't in his hands. The Bears hold all the cards here because the Bears can tag him. So, and Allen Robinson knows that. His representatives know that. That's, he, he can choose to not sign a long-term contract here. Doesn't mean he's playing anywhere else but in Chicago in 2021. Great point by you and there's, Al Cap. Yeah, th- there was people out there during the game saying if they're Allen Robinson, he should sit out the rest of the season. And I'm like, yeah, if, you, if you don't want to get paid, <laughs> go ahead and do that. It's not going to help you. This guy wants to, my boy Jeremy Mueller wants to just let him go. Why? It's not popular. I have no idea. He just wants to be bad. I think I saw a couple tanks. We need to just tank now for a quarterback. You're already out of that. You've got five wins. You're, you can get closer. You're, you're not going to get, you're not in Fields territory. You're not in Lawrence territory. That's, that's a done deal. This is getting worse by the minute. Do you think yeah. the O line improved this game, Shane? Actually, seemed like. Okay. Well, th- listen, Phil. You and I know Rashad. We've talked to him on air, off air. He's. Yeah. It's he. He's not an NFL an NFL lineman. He's just not. He's not right. He's not ready. I was mean, Briggs a healthy scratch tonight, or was he? Yeah. No, no, no. He, he was, was healthy scratch. He was active, yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. But then, I mean, Alex Bars, same same yeah, type I, of deal. I gotta, I'm going to pull up Matt Nagy and say I got to watch the tape, Eric, as I really do, because it seemed in the early part of the game that this offensive line was giving him a pocket. Yeah. And the play calling and the situations were – just absent, absent. But it's, it's the same story. The thing it's about it is, is this laser. this story. offense is so bad. This is where you can't lose, you know, sight of what is important. This offense is so horrific. We're gonna we're gonna praise the offensive line just because the quarterback didn't get sacked, or they actually gave him a pocket. Our fucking bar's got to be set. Just a little bit higher. That's the thing. Yeah. It's 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 the same thing at quarterback. That's why in, I tweeted out when Tyler Bray came in. I was almost hoping because if, if he would just say if he would have thrown a bomb and the Bears would have won, throw it deep. It, well, exactly. I mean, but that the problem with that was eighty five percent of the fan base would have said he Phil. There was a point where people were saying Chase Daniel. Was a guy that you could oh, move yeah. forward with, Brian yeah, but Hoyer. That's why we're here. Yeah, no, no, no. I get it. I'm just saying they it's have to keep people in lanes. They want the brawl. Go chase, chase. You want reality? You come here and we'll break it down. Yeah. It's not a fight. It's reality. 
it's the truth. Let me say this and then we'll wrap up. In my life, these are my final thoughts, Shane. In my life, being around football, I've learned a few things about the game and about the people within it. When the game is absent from scouting and understanding what your opponent's trying to do, and you're so worried about trying to do what you want to do, you lose every time. So let me put it to you like this. If Do you think you could run an option play with Nick Foles? <laughs> no. So do you think any defensive coordinator is going to be threatened by a mesh Not at with all. him pulling and running option? The only action is a reaction to either you're running or you're throwing. So you, you and your offense are out. They're out because Patrick Mahomes can run. He's not a runner, but he can he can threaten you. So that yeah. makes you have to stop. It makes you have to paw. Nick Foles is not getting to any edge. The only edge is the gym that he can go to to work out. And I hope you have one so you know that there is an edge gym because there's they're all over here in Connecticut. The reality is that's – the root. When Mitch comes in there, you can run option because he can run. You can run read option. He becomes a threat. So now is he going to pull it? And then you put defenses on notice. You put him on an isolation. He doesn't know his personnel. doesn't know what they do formationally. And he doesn't know how to attack a, an opponent. And you got that Barone comment that Shane shared on keeping it 100 to back this up, any offense that's reading and not attacking is never winning because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're scheming to make your money. And that's really what all boiled down to tonight. And you still had an opportunity to win. You had an opportunity to beat the Saints. You had an opportunity to beat the Titans. And you had an opportunity to win tonight. And you should have won 28-3. to Instead, you get beat, and you get embarrassed, and you had 36 total yards of offense. 36. I think that was the number, right? In the second half, you had 36. Yeah. yeah. And that's the offensive guru. That's planning. This is paid coaches, millions of dollars, to go out there and rub bubble screen and make Corderell Patterson the whole game plan. When he is just a great kick returner, and a matchup that you use as a chess piece. It's it's like, what's that piece, Shane, on the chess the chess board? Is it the rook that you could just go at angles? Or do you not play chess? Not chess guy. Anyway, those are my final thoughts, Shane. And this coach is just completely, in my opinion, to blame for this. And why we're here at five and five. Your final thoughts. No, it's much of the same, man. It's this defense is fantastic, it's something that they can build on, but this this offensive philosophy coaching staff is fundamentally flawed. And it's it's yeah. not something that I can't in good faith turn the Bears first round draft pick over to Ryan Pace and to Matt Nagy, you know, maybe maybe they do go get an offensive lineman. Who knows? But obviously, quarterback. Listen, if you don't have a quarterback, you're where we are. That's why the Bears have been so inept for so long, and that's why they're a laughing stock. That's why jackasses like Jason Lock and Fora and all these assholes go after Bears fans on Twitter because. You know, it's a fucking clown show. It really is. You, it's never going to change until you win consistently. And it's never going to change until you start to get consistent play from the quarterback position and have a fundamentally sound offensive plan. And they don't. You can say whatever you want about Lovey Smith. And yes, the Bears had glimpses. But he also changed offensive coordinators how many times, Phil? You know what I mean? It, it's there's no 
consistency on the offensive side of the football in Chicago. It's just, there's not. You invest in David Montgomery so much that you trade up in the draft for him, and you don't want to use him. You, you don't know how to use him. You took the 43rd overall pick this year and used it. You heard them say it on the broadcast tonight. They want to get him in more involved. He had zero targets last week. He had one catch tonight, correct? Come on. So that means he's he had, had a catch that I was think intended for Allen Robinson. Yes. If you watch it. Yep. He and actually I, comes in front of it. I believe that's thirteen or four I believe it's thirteen targets on the season that Cole Komet has. And we just played our tenth game of the year. Thirteen. Phil, he should have that in two games. I know you predicted that. He can't even do it, man. It's a disgrace. It's something I'm glad because the Monday night football, let me keep it 100 real quick, will push the all 22. It won't come out till Wednesday. So that means the tape never lies. will probably come out on Thursday, and keeping it 100 with Zach Miller will be Thursday night. So patrons, you'll get the full version. And one last time, go over to the patron channel, www.thetapeneverlies.com. Dot com Become a patron member. Coaches clinics, analysis, full offensive, defensive, special teams breakdowns. Fun shows, pop-up shows, breakfast shows, lunchtime shows, everything going on there. You like this. You like BHL. Right now, there's a terrible taste in your mouth, but it's with all of us. The only way we're going to change it is if we keep talking about it. And you keep shouting out, don't be shoe. Don't be you. Be together. Let's do this all together. I want to thank Claudio for producing tonight. That was my fault on the open. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling the three I opens pl- that we had. I don't want yeah. to blame Claudio. It's my fault. I, I, I had what? a run, dude. I had a run. Because Shane, you were looking down. You weren't even saying. I had to run into the other room and say, Phil. You got keeping 100 open. I'm texting open going. Claudio to get the music. <laughs> no, I can hear. I'm like, what is he doing? And then you went off keeping it 100, and then you went to a different thing, and then a different thing, and then a different thing. That's like, why we he? have to switch that fucking yeah. thing, Shane. Because all right, so let's I'm looking for it. So that's anyway, fine. Anyway, let we me can... end it. We love you guys. BHL, catch us Thursday. Tape never lies. It's all there. Shout us out. DM us. We'll be there. If you need therapy, maybe we'll pop up earlier. Something will happen. Thank you for watching Bears Hour Live, the best post Bears game show on the planet. On the tape, Never Lies Network. <laughs>